What's up, Fast Pitch players? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk some pitching strategy and the number one pitch calling mistake that I see between coaches, pitchers, and catchers. All right, so the number one pitch calling strategy mistake that I see in fast pitch and baseball, to be quite honest, is catchers, pitchers, and coaches not understanding the pitcher's strengths and weaknesses. So it's easy to call a game based on like a formula, like, oh, let's always go hard in, soft away, or let's start people off with change ups and then do this and that. Or just to say, oh, she's got a great drop curve, let's go to that. She's got a great rise ball, let's go to that. Pitchers are complex humans, I know because I am one. And there's a lot of factors that we'll go into just now in this video that really influence what the best pitch call is gonna be in a given situation. So the first one is understanding a pitcher's strengths and weaknesses for inside versus outside. And really what I mean is arm side versus glove side. So if you're righty, this would be the arm side of the plate, you know, as you're peering into the, into the, uh, to the catcher, and this would be the glove side of the plate. So arm side, glove side never changes for you as a pitcher, but it would change inside versus outside depending if it's a lefty or righty. So every pitcher is a little bit better either at the arm side or her glove side. And as a catcher, it's important to understand this because say you think, oh man, this would be the perfect pitch on the outer third. Say, the, uh, say there's a righty hitter and this is the outer third. This, we've got her set up to go inside uh, with, a, with a fastball on the outer third. But if the pitcher is really good to the arm side and not very good at getting it to the glove side, to this part of the plate, then is that a smart pitch call for her? If she doesn't make this pitch very reliably because she's much, much, much better at this side of the plate, then that might not be the best pitching strategy. I was a good example as a baseball pitcher. I could hit this part of the plate inside to righties very, very well, and I really struggled getting the ball inside to lefties. So if a catcher called an inside fastball to a lefty when it was like a big situation, I would shake it off because I'm like, I'm probably not going to make that pitch. Even if I focus up and you know really bear down, I'm probably going to miss that spot and leave it over the plate. So maybe let's try our luck over the other side of the plate where I'm a lot better and I can at least execute a quality pitch even if it's not the perfect pitch call for that situation. So the first factor here is knowing whether the pitcher is good is better at glove side or arm side of the plate. All right, the next factor, and this is very similar, is knowing whether a pitcher is stronger going up in the zone or down in the zone. And this is gonna factor into velocity, the way they spin the ball, their arsenal, and just their command. So say you think the perfect pitch call you know, is a drop curve right here. Well, how often does she execute that pitch? Is she good at executing or does she leave her drop, drop balls a little bit higher up, right? So you just have to understand what can the pitcher actually do and are they good enough to, if we say, hey, let's go rise ball up the ladder, does she often do that well? Or does she leave her rise ball over the middle a lot more? Maybe we shouldn't try to go up on this girl because you know our pitcher leaves it down too often and then we'll get really hurt. She will probably take as deep if we do that. So let's take our chances with a, maybe a change up down or a drop curve down or, or whatever, rather than going up with a rise ball, which is probably a less reliably executed pitch. So make sure you understand what your pitcher's strengths and weaknesses are as far as up in the zone versus down in the zone. All right, the next pitch calling factor here is what pitches is a pitcher really confident in? Say she throws a fastball, a drop curve, and a change up. She's really confident in the changeup. She's really confident in her fastball. She's not that confident in the drop curve. Well, if the game's on the line and the drop curve seems like the best pitch on paper because the hitter maybe can't hit a curveball to save her life, is that the right pitch though? Because that's her third best pitch. She's not real confident in it. So she's probably more likely to not spin it as well, to get in her head about throwing it if the game's on the line and maybe to leave it over the plate. So understanding what your pitcher's strengths and weaknesses are just based on her different pitch, uh, her pitch repertoire is really important. You don't want to hang her out to dry and say, hey, we need you to make a really important big pitch with your fourth best pitch. That's not the best place to be in. Fourth best, fourth best pitches are best thrown to eight hole hitters when there's no real stakes. Like it's not that big a deal if you throw a bad drop curve and she hits into the outfield, right? You don't want to get beat on your worst pitch. So understand what your pitcher can throw and what she throws well, and then try to factor that in. So, okay, may, again, maybe chain up is the best pitch we could call right now, but it's her worst pitch. So is that really a smart pitch call? Okay, so make sure you don't take the human element out of the pitch type that you're calling. All right, the last factor here is let's talk about the confidence of your pitcher 
and where she might go and what might get better or get worse based on the situation or something else. So say your pitcher's been get, getting hit around and the bases are loaded and the game's sort of getting out of hand and she's not feeling super confident. Well, what happens when that happens to her? Does she start overthrowing and get kind of mad and get kind of frustrated and like throws a lot more fastballs and rise balls up in the zone? And then maybe her changeup gets worse because she doesn't spin as well and she's just like overthrowing it. You need to factor that in because again, if you're like, hey, her, her changeup is usually awesome, but now she's angry and so she's kind of overthrowing her changeup. Maybe we should go away for that pit from that pitch right now until we get out of this inning and can, can calm our pitcher down. Or say when your pitcher gets really frustrated and starts to doubt her ability, maybe her, her drop curve isn't as good anymore because she kind of eases off it and tries to guide it. And now that pitch went from her best pitch to like maybe her second or third best pitch because she, she's not real confident right now. So understanding how your pitcher's stuff changes as she gets frustrated, angry, uh, you know, just mad about her, mad at herself or just starts to doubt her abilities or starts to get just disappointed. Again, pitchers are human beings and that happens. When I was nervous as a pitcher, I would tend to like try to guide my curveball. I'd be, I wouldn't be like, boom, like really hammer it. And you have to know that about me. If it's like a big situation and Dan's not feeling super confident, it's probably not a great idea to call his curveball right now. Let's get him something he's a little more confident, like his fastball or his changeup, and then come back to the curveball later. Or, you know, come back to when he can bounce it easily, something like that. So understand how your pitcher's emotions impact the quality of the stuff of the stuff they throw and the locations that they can throw it to. Those are really important factors in making smart pitch calls. Obviously, I love talking pitching strategy, whether it's baseball or softball. So if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave me one in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you here in the next video.